Hello everyone, Cyber Eclipse here, and we're back for more Star Ocean 2, the second story. It's a beautiful Saturday morning, the sun is shining, I just got out of the shower, it's about 9.30 in the morning here, where I live, and I decided to uh, record some more Star Ocean before I start my day. Why not? <clears throat> now, as you can see, um, after the last video, I went and leveled up a whole bunch because uh, this dungeon can be pretty hard if you're not prepared and I would think it's it's an absolute necessity to level up before going into this dungeon just doing a little bit of level grinding because the enemies can really There's kick your ass if I you're not prepared you I mean I make them look easy because I leveled up a whole bunch but trust me when I um, tried recording this the first time, and I had forgotten to level up, oh, I was getting my ass kicked. Not by this monster, but I'll point out the one that was. That battle was pretty easy, actually. So basically, we're in a we're in a mine. We're underground. I don't know why they wouldn't call it the Hoffman Mine instead of the Hoffman Ruins, I mean... It looks like at any minute this place could collapse if you're not careful. There's the enemy. We can win this! And this is where arena spells come in handy. Instead of having to worry about the character's skills going into effect and, uh, eventually, uh, you know, running around them and being able to hit them in the back, because you can't hit them at the front because of their shields. Unless you level up another skill that allows you to break through the enemy's defenses, but even that doesn't always work. Well, that's a good workout, 80 points. Alright. Claude's got uh, a really good shield equipped right now. At least I think it's good for right now. I've been looking up... Um, well, I've been researching on Google things on homicide. I don't know why. It just kind of... It intrigues me as to why people the would, enemy. would commit Let's homicide and kill another person. And those red monster things are the things that can really kick your ass if you're not leveled up enough. Anyway, back what I was saying. Um, yeah, like... He, he, like, I've, I've heard a lot about, um, you know, antisocial personality disorder and... Uh, you know, sociopaths, psychopaths, people that either just don't care, or people that, um, you know, don't understand between right and wrong, so they just kill people just because they have the urge and they don't have that, they don't really have that conscience, basically. But, are you okay? And I only, um, I only found one video on this so far on YouTube, um, is what about people who don't fall under those categories? For example, like, you know, Claude, Rena, and the rest of the gang here. I mean, I don't think they would be considered as sociopaths or psychopaths, especially not Rena or Claude. Actually, none of them. They all seem to care very deeply about people and, and animals and living things. So, yeah, what what makes them be able to kill, you know what I mean? I mean, yes, they're monsters, but, you know, people that are possessed or, you know, monsters are living things too. Yeah, there's dynamite in here. I just wanted to show you guys what it was like, what it looked like. It's not too hard to heal them. Yeah, so like, and you gotta wonder, like, People with consciences, I'm sure they can kill, too. I mean, everybody has a breaking point, right? It's all about, you know, what could happen in your life in order to 
reach that breaking point, whether it's extreme anger or whether it's whether your emotions just turn off and then you can't feel anything anymore. It's just, you know, someone who used to be empathetic suddenly loses Is their empathy it? because Beware. of everything that they've been through. I mean, I noticed that those kinds of people aren't really mentioned. The people that do have a conscience, but people that are just pushed to the limit. I don't really hear or read much about that. I mean, how much grief do these would these characters go through, I mean, at the end of the day, thinking, oh, how many monsters have I killed today? How many people have I defeated today? Oh, my! Hmm. I think I'm reading too much into things. I mean, I know that when I've been extremely, extremely angry, and when I think a lot about what I've been through in my life so far, which I will keep private, um... I've... I've fantasized about killing people before. I've never done anything about it, thank goodness, but... And I never would, but... You know, yeah. What does it take to put that person to the breaking point? I mean, there's... Okay, there's fantasizing about killing someone, and then there's... Like, actually acting on it. Like, fantasizing and thinking about it is one thing, but if you can control yourself and not act on it, then... I figure there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know, we're animals. Yes, we're... we're able to reason and, um... You know, we're more logical than, say, I don't know, like a bear or a... or a dog or any kind of animal out there that we would have as a pet. But we still have those, those instincts, those animal instincts, you know, if you're cornered or if you're feeling threatened or you feel like someone's going to hurt you first or, you know, you feel like you have to defend yourself, those situations can come up. Well, let's do it. I'm not saying, I'm not saying killing somebody could be justifiable, but... You know, we all have those innate instincts where I think if we could harm some another human being, then we could. Personally, I think anyone could harm somebody. I think the nicest person in the entire world is capable of harming somebody. It's just about how far you push them and you know, where your limits are. Some people are pushed to the brink really easily, and others, it takes a lot. I don't know, I'm just kind of rambling. This just kind of came up out of nowhere, I mean... I don't know. I really wish that I could read up more on, say, people who, who aren't considered sociopaths or psychopaths that have killed somebody and, you know, just the emotional numbness and exactly how something like, how something like that could come up, I mean. Because I'm sure that there are people out there who have killed people who are remorseful for their actions, but they feel like they've had no choice. Heads up! I will turn you into a beehive. Oh, Oprah, you're weird. Cold wind! Ah, yeah, have you noticed that, uh, the, uh, programmers who were, uh, doing the English voice tracks made a mistake? I don't know if this was by accident or what, but they left in Rena's Japanese voiceover for the tractor beam spell. That's kind of funny. And that particular voice clip doesn't show up in, um, in the voice clips, um, in the option Easy menu, target. Beware. or in the sound menu on the title screen. So, I don't know, I found that kind of funny. Into 
Speaking of the voiceovers, I, um... I don't know, I... I don't like the voice the voiceovers for um for the remake of this game for Star Ocean Second Evolution. I just don't feel like it suits the characters. Maybe I'm just too used to this one. I mean, I'm not saying that this doesn't have very good voice tracks either. But to be honest, I really wish that they had just kept the Japanese voice voiceovers in this game. I think that would have made it a lot better. In my opinion. I mean, if you know that the voice tracks aren't going to be as good as the Japanese versions, then just leave it alone. Is this it? I'm coming! But this was made back in the 90s where, Go! you know, they tried to make everything dubbed and... I don't have anything against dubs, I mean... I've seen the occasional good English dub of, say, a Japanese anime, or maybe even a video game. Like, newer video games, I find, have better voice acting than, say, in this, in the PlayStation era, or even before that, but... I don't I'm know. coming! Don't get hurt! I'm all for the Japanese voices. It's just kind of a double-edged sword for me, because... With my visual impairment, it hurts my eyes if I'm reading for too long, so sitting and reading subtitles for long periods of time can be a real pain in the ass for me. Or should I say pain in the eyes? So it's really tough. It's easier to watch English dubs, or of course understand English dubs, whether it's a video game or an anime or a TV show or what. But. The voice acting in general, I think, is better in Japanese with the subtitles. I guess it all depends on what I'm in the mood for and what I'm willing to tolerate. We're pretty deep in the, uh... I'm gonna call it the mines. I know it's ruins, but... We're pretty deep in the... In the mines here. In the Hoffman ruins. I wonder why they call oh, this place the Hoffman, Hoffman Ruins. Is some guy named Hoffman living here? Does, uh... Did some guy with the last name of Hoffman actually discover this place? Who knows? <laughs> Whenever I think of the Hoffman Ruins, I think of Dustin Hoffman. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, look at all these items. I usually don't bother sorting through my items way. until Thank after you. a dungeon. Even if I'm just playing on my own, that's kind of just how I do things. Twin Twin I'm kicking these things' asses now. They're... <clears throat> they have no hope. Monsters have no hope, and we have plenty of hope with the Lacor. I know, that was lame. Oops, oops. I hate it when I do that. <clears throat> I accidentally go down and off the screen when I don't mean to. I saw a save point up there in the corner. That There's means it's the boss enemy. time. I will make you fall. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a Will and Grace. You know the show Will and Grace? I have that on mute right now. I never really cared for that show. I don't understand how it did so well. I mean, it's great that it's about gay people, but... I just, I don't find the humor funny. In fact, I, I find it very annoying, actually. I don't understand what's so funny about that show. Crap. Oh, I hate it when I win a battle and one of my characters doesn't get 
and experience because of a status ailment. The reason why I have Will and Grace on mute right now is because I'm waiting for a movie to start on uh, W Movies. <clears throat> but that doesn't start until a little bit later, so. Alright, here we go, boss time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Voice acting time. Look, look! This is it! I found it! Didn't we make it this far by us all cooperating? <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, I guess I could give you guys passing marks. Oh please, you didn't even battle with us, you little shit. What a smart Alec. He's cuter because he's a little bit of a smart Alec. Don't you go too far over there. My pendant! Huh? It seems to be glowing faintly. Is it not because of this mineral here? Big sister, let's collect the mineral and go. Behind you! Well, let's do it! Oh, I hate these enemies. They're not too bad right now, but later on in the game, like near the end of the game, these enemies are such assholes. And I will refer to them when we get there, too. These are the easy guys. <laughs> Anyway, what you guys need, um, it's kind of funny how, um, how some, um, translators for video games try to translate the, uh, the Japanese phrasing. For example, the reason why, Re um, Leon calls Rina big sister, which would be translated to Oni-chan in Japanese, which is an affectionate name for sister, it's, uh, Rina isn't Leon's actual sister, it's just sort of like an affectionate thing to call someone. Um, usually they call someone like brother or sister in an affectionate tone um, if they really care about that person. I think it's just something kind of cute that some people do. It's usually something that... It's usually something that girls or little children do. So of course Leon would do it because I think he's, he, you know, he's just a little boy. Um, another thing that might have sounded kind of strange, I forgot to mention it, is um, back after the tournament, back after the tournament of arms, um, when Claude called Diaz by his name, and then remember how Diaz said, "I don't remember telling you that you could call me by my first name, but no matter, right?" You're probably wondering what that was about because you know. Here, here in um, in uh, Western cultures, at least in Canada and the States, you call you call someone by their first name anyway. It's just kind of general, right? Unless it's like a buddy, you call them by by their last name. But that's usually between guy friends. Um, but in Japan, you usually call that person by their last name and then end it with with uh, um, Sam, which. Uh, which is, um, an honorific for Mr. or Miss, or I think Mrs. as well. So, when Claude called Diaz by his first name without really knowing them that well, in Japanese that's actually considered impolite. It's considered rather rude. Because to call someone by their name without an honorific at all implies that they're extremely close, like buddy-buddy, you know? Like, yeah, you'd have to be, like, really close and have it be okay with both with both parties in order for that to be the case. So, in Japanese, uh, Claude was actually being a little bit rude there. But, when putting that, um, 
you know, and putting that in the Western context, it does sound kind of strange. I just thought I'd explain that a little bit there. Oh, phew, I thought that Bowman was dead there. Woo! Damn slowdown. I'm gonna try and fix this. I, the slowdown is really pissing me off. So I can imagine that you guys must be pissed off. But then I'm also a perfectionist, so... Whatever, as long as the game works, who cares, I guess, right? Okay, come on, die, 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 die! This guy should be almost dead anyway, I'm gonna go and just kick his ass. Go, 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 die, die, die! Well, that's somewhere around 80 points. I did it! Uh, star rubies are pretty useless, in my opinion. Yes! <clears throat> we did it! Ah, oh, Rena learned growth. Is everyone okay? Sure, I'm okay. Where's Leon? He was fighting with us until just now. Well, he, he wasn't, but... <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Leon, you disappeared just as soon as the battle ended. <clears throat> I can't help it. I'd never seen that monster, even in a book. Now I see. You have no immunity against that sort of thing. Stop laughing! Come on, Claude. Let's collect the mineral and go. You're right. Look at that green mineral there. Energy stone. Alright, with this, the Lacor hope can work. Hopefully. Well, that's it. Rena, what's with your pendant? It isn't doing anything now. Isn't it reacting with this mineral here? Yeah, you said that before, Selene. Why are we repeating ourselves? Now it's the mineral of the ruins. I wonder what actually triggered it. Here, Leon. You found this mineral, so hold on to it. Okay. The soldier is waiting on the coast. Come on, let's go. Ah, and with that, I will see you guys at the entrance. See? That was pretty quick, eh? Now, let's head out of here and head back to Lacor. right? Why don't you say something? At least answer me. Hi, Opera. You kindly followed me. I'm glad. Ern? 
Oh, my dear Opera, I love you so. What are you saying? There's something wrong with you. Opera? What's wrong? Might this man be earnest? No, he's not. He is not the earnest I know. Opera, didn't you kindly follow me for so long? Come be by my side. I won't leave you again. What are you talking about? Stop your joking. Oh, Opera, that boy has the energy stone. You shouldn't give it to him. That stone is mine. it just what is it something's wrong with you what is different I'm the same me as always come bring that stone to me no stay away from me I'll shoot if you come any closer There's no need to be afraid. What can I say? I love you. No! I... I... What? Earn! 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 trying to be nice and you go pushing your luck. You wanted to be like, liked by this man, right? You wanted to be loved, right? You should have been honest. Earn, Ernest would never woo a woman like that. So what? You were never loved anyway. I just wanted to steal the energy stone. <coughs> but it's hopeless like this. Sorry, but I am not your beloved Ernest. I shall show you my true form. Uh oh. You all will die. I don't care if you fight back, but do it at the risk of her life. Go sass. I won't do it with spirit. All right, let's curse basically lowers. Um, I think it just lowers their abilities or their skills pretty much, doesn't it? I actually don't really remember. I don't use that spell that often. chance to use it there but you'll see it eventually oh, is it, it um it increases it. that person's attack strength who you use it on so it basically just ups your strength that's all i hope we'll make it in time no i'll definitely make it in time Oh, oh. 
Are you all right? Ugh, sort of. I'm sorry, Opera. I shouldn't have left you and gone away. Don't worry about that. Please excuse me, I haven't introduced myself. My name is Ernest Ravide. In the States, I'm something of a well-known archaeologist. I am indebted to you. Let me offer my thanks. On this trip, I have come to investigate the ruins of a heraldic civilization, but I seem to have made a complete mess of, the, of it. But what shall I do? Now that I have found Urn, that means that I have no more reason to continue with you all. What? Isn't that so? Can't I just go back together with Ernest? Well, that's true, but... So you can either have Opera and Ernest go on their separate ways, without us, or you can have them both come with us. Won't you continue traveling with us for a while? Is that because having me along is better in battle? No, that's not it. I just want to keep traveling with you. I... So... Say, Urn. That's right. That's right. Since we're here, perhaps you will let me tag along until the end. I have been helped out a lot by all of you. If that's so, then I'm along too. You're quite welcome to come along. And I have no idea why the music didn't play here. No clue at all. At first, I was afraid that it froze, but anyway, Ernest has now joined our party, so we now have a new character. I'll just kind of show you what he looks like here. There we go. Looks a little rugged. Ooh, he's got some good stuff! Whenever I play as him, he always has the musical ability, the pitch and the sense of rhythm. Seems to be something he has quite often. But ooh, he's got some good skills, yay! Or talents, I should say. Let's see... Yeah, um, Ernest uses whips to attack. And... Again, we have another fighter and not a magic user. We're... We're getting a lot of, um... People that can use killer moves instead of, um... Magic. Which is okay by me. They both have their place. stuff off screen. Sometimes I forget that I'm recording and I uh, kind of take my time with picking things and I'm just like, oh, what do I use? What do I use? Sometimes it takes a little bit of thought, a bit of strategy, because that's what this game is, right? Strategy. Dimension whip and spiral. Okay, spiral whip. Alright, he doesn't have any other ones. Okay. And his strategy is going to be conserve all killer moves like everybody else. 